Good evening. One of the main concerns that we have on the NICU when we have an X-ray like this, obviously the baby is very sick. This is the football sign and it indicates perforation. So pneumoperitoneum, the gas accumulates, comes to the top of the uh, abdominal wall, close to the abdominal wall and collects. And this is like a football. We have the falciform ligament, the intestines are pushed inwards and so the gas floats at the top and that's a sign of perforation. A perforation obviously means the baby is very sick and it's an emergency, we need to intervene immediately. So what can be the possible etiologies? Uh, very rarely it can be secondary to a pneumothorax, but majority of the time it's a organ perforation in the intest either the intestine or the stomach. And it happens secondary to either spontaneous intestinal perforation or SIP or necrotizing enterocolitis or NEZ. So the main question comes up as to how to differentiate between the two of them. I'll try to cover in the next two, three slides these aspects. So obviously it's very important to differentiate uh, between NEZ and SEP because the etiology, the pathogenesis, the management, everything is different as well as the prognosis. There are some features which point to NEC. So usually it happens after 10 to 14 days. Uh, the more premature the baby, the later the onset of NEC. So for example, an extreme premature baby, the NEC may actually happen the third week or later. There is usually precedent signs like raised inflammatory markers, feed intolerance, it can be blood stained stools, it can be GI altered aspirates, abdominal distension. And you also have the typical radiologic features like uh, nematosis intestinalis and other features uh, which precede NEC. It's very rare in NEC to present directly with perforation. It can happen, but it's not common. And it's usually seen in a baby who has been fed for a few days. In contrast, SIP or spontaneous intense perforation typically happens by five to 10 days or sometimes even earlier. The more premature the baby, the earlier it happens. And it's uh, typically seen in the extreme premature babies who are below 28 weeks of gestation. The more premature in the extreme preterm, like 24 to 26 weeks, are at higher risk. It's typically associated with the hemodynamically significant PDA as well as with PDA treatment, especially if you're using ibuprofen or endomethacin. And if there is a concomitant use of hydrocortisone for high blood pressure or, I mean, hypotension or any other concerns, it's more likely to happen. There is a lack of clear association with feeding. Obviously, this happens very early in the extreme premature babies, and you're usually just on trophic feeds at this stage. There is another entity called meconium obstruction of prematurity, which typically happens in the extreme premature where the gut motility is immature, the meconium is more viscid, and it doesn't empty. The baby doesn't pass stool even with suppository. There is persisting feed intolerance. So in these babies, sometimes omnipec, uh, water-soluble iodine-based contrast, uh, first given as an enema, and if it were persists, we can give it as uh, upper GI contrast. You don't expose the baby to as many uh, radiographs to reduce the radiation exposure. The main aim is to act as a therapeutic effect with this uh, gastro, I mean, the IOPAC uh, absorbing more fluid. It makes a meconium less viscid and helps to pass, and subsequently the baby may start tolerating feeds. This uh, meconium inspiration may be predisposed to SIP as well. And obviously, uh, as I have discussed on the uh, video on RDS and pragmatic approach. We use higher pressures with an APPV if you don't use surfactant on time, and this may predispose. So this is one of the reasons why you may want to give surfactant early in the course rather than later. The surgical pathology is different between the two conditions as well, and in NEC we get segmental coagulative necrosis of the mucosa with focal hemorrhage as an evidence of ischemia. We have intramural gas, uh, which is seen as nematosis on the radiographs, with sloughing of the mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis. The extent of intestinal involvement is variable, and perforation can be in any portion from the jejunum to the ileum. In the case of surgical pathology in the SIP, you have preserved mucosal integrity. The mucosa is spared. There is subserosal thinning and necrosis of the muscularis. Perforation here typically is at the ileocecal junction. It can happen at other sites, as I mentioned, but because the inspissated meconium typically gets stuck in the ileocecal junction, narrowest part, uh, this is the typical site of the perforation. There is a slight difference in the management as well. In a sick premature baby with perforation, most of the times the surgeon decides to do a peritoneal drain 
under local anesthesia so this is the same whether it is sip or nec however the chances of the temporizing measure being the only measure needed is more with sip so 20 to 30% of babies with sip need further surgery while uh, more than 50% of the babies with nec up to 70% may need open surgery so uh, prognosis which is uh, usually good with sip as it's a local perforation uh, however because this is in the high uh, extreme premature group they are at high risk for overall complications so we have to keep that in mind when we look at outcome so i hope this short summary is useful do share